you know, pretty much blows, you know, the competition away, uh, especially those that, um, you know, don't require expensive proprietary hardware on both ends, which we don't. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, the fact that we have almost zero latency uh, on the stream is critically important because, oh, you yeah. know, in the case of me and Michael on Godzilla, if I press play on my Avid here, he cannot be re receiving that six seconds later. It just doesn't work. <laughs> Perfect. Now we're all, we're all in one space, basically. Awesome. Yeah. How you been? I'm doing good. I love your setup in the background. Where are you at? So this is my, um, this is like my, you know, everyone's, you know, done their, their own kind of work from home thing. So uh -huh. that's just kind of my editing system there. Um, I cut on Avid and just, you know, kind of got dual computers to go. And at the same time, I like that. Well, it's actually work. one, uh, it's one, it, you know, it's the new Maxi's greater. A uh -huh. couple uh, storage drives there and uh, a dual monitor display. The big big monitor up above shows the output uh -huh. of the Avid, my, you know, the editing system. So, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing for the past. Um, and you got the movie poster. I feel like I'm walking into a movie theater at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it, it helps when you're when you're when you're cutting to remind yourself that, oh yeah, I actually can do this. Yep, that's a heck of a before. reminder. You know, because sometimes you're looking at a scene, you're like, what the fuck do I do here? You know, I'm completely <laughs> right. I'm like, what did I do on that movie or that movie? Oh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll try that. <laughs> that's awesome, I love it. Are you in California? I am, I am in uh, kind of by Santa Monica. Oh, okay. The west side of LA. The good side, the fun side. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know if it's the fun side. You know, it's sort of the gentrified side, I guess. Um, the side that every every tourist visits. You know, that's yeah, the... yeah. You got to do you got to do the third street crawl or whatever. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at? I'm in Chicago. Cool. Yep. I uh, love Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. I was on location there for like four or five months when I was cutting Speed Racer for the Wachowskis. Oh, they're from here. That's that's their home base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We shot it in Berlin, <clears throat> and then we went back to do the uh, director's cut there in Chicago. So I got to know the city and fell in love with food, it. Food, right? <laughs> oh, God, yeah, crazy. I mean, thankfully for me, it wasn't during the winter. Um, so I kind of got the best of both worlds. Yeah, no, you picked a good time then. I mean, we're slowly starting to evolve out of the winter. Yeah. So it's when like... We, we did... It, um, we, we I, one of the things that I remember most was we all went out one night and just got hammered, and at this place called Volleyball. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yup, yup. The go like go karts and yes. Uh, like what is it? The the wiffle ball thing. Yep, it's like a wiffle ball on the golf cart. It, it, on the go karts, it's awesome. Yeah. It's not. I mean, every city needs that. You know why? Why that has not moved out of Chicago? I have no idea. It is, especially like you say, getting hammered and doing stuff like you can't have more fun. I can imagine doing that. That's a <laughs> heck of a time. I've done that once and, and I'm kind of looking to do it again because it, it's especially cool. You have a group of friends with or a few people yeah, with yeah. you. It's a blast. So, yeah, you're, you know, hands are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, several people got hurt, obviously. And hey, you got to watch out, too, because <laughs> you're swinging things. So, yes, you are. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So you had a good Chicago experience. That's good to hear. I, I like yeah, I like sure. when out-of-towners get to do the cool things that a lot of locals don't even know about yeah. or see. So right, right, you had right. a full experience. So um, tell me about, you know, kind of what the, what it is you're looking to talk about and, yeah. uh, you know, how I can, how I can sort of, you know, help, help you in what you're doing. Well, here's the thing. So uh, as a, you know, entertainment reporter and kind of a, a person who runs their own site and all does their own editing and stuff like this is right up something my alley that I would like like to know about that you would do not on a scale of movies obviously but you know I'm constantly like this is going to be edited later you know with uh, either either um, Adobe or you know 
I, I, I've been just doing the edits too. And for a long time. So it's cool that when I heard that you guys are kind of revolutionizing the editing game with kind of uh, the, the video aspect of it, that, that, that was really interesting to me to, to hear about. And I guess I'll start well, out. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll get, I'll get into that and describe, you know, what it does and, and the benefits it provides people for sure. Yeah. That's cool because it's it combines two of our necessities. I'm guessing over the past year, it you what you guys have been doing has really come to use uh, in yeah. no way I mean, like it, ever it, before. It's one, it's one of those cases where you know um, you're just there at the right time with the right with the right technology to mm -hmm. help people through a really difficult time. No and, question. You know, to be there was a lot of work done prior to that, and believe me, there were times when we didn't know if we were going to make it, um, because it's really difficult to change people's work habits. Yep. You know, and so sometimes it takes a literal force of nature to you know push people out of their comfort zone and to try new things, even though these new things may provide like you know, um, more efficiency, better work-life balance, those kinds of things. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the question now is, now that people have used it and we've had, we've exploded. I mean, in the past year, we've had, you know, over a thousand percent growth. Wow, now. that's crazy. So we, we've sort of become the industry standard for what it is that we do in terms of, you know, coll creatively collaborating with content with people, you know, in other places. So, you know, post COVID, what does that look like? You know, that's the question we're trying to answer now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, for me, because I got involved a long, long time ago, I got involved like two and a half years ago. And um, I, the reason it appealed to me when I became Evercast's first user was um, the ability to collaborate with my director without traveling to location for four months. That's because huge. That is, and people with like that aren't in the industry in a sense have no idea how just well, to travel itself, how major this is and how much time efficiency that you get out of something like that. Yeah. Well, you have to understand the context too. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had been doing this for over 20 years. And you're an editor by trade, right? Uh, originally. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I mean, I've done some other things like producing and stuff like that, but mostly that's like, Hey, you did a great job. Here's a producing credit. <laughs> kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's, right. it's, it's, it's like the cherry on top. Yep. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, but so over the course of 20 years doing all this traveling, it's going to catch up with you at some point, at least it did for me mm -hmm. and my relationship with who is now my ex-wife, um, because it injects a lot of, um, you know, um, challenges and sometimes conflict into the relationship because it can be perceived like you are choosing work over them when that's yeah. what you do to provide. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, no, it's to, a tough not balance. To get, not to get too deep deep into that. Well, but, this is good. Uh, this is this is this is really the root of all of this. You well, know? it like, is it, how well, it affects it was, you. Yeah, it was for me. I mean, it was deeply, deeply personal, mm -hmm. um, which is why it had such a big impact on me when I came across it because I thought, you know, if this works, um, to to be given the opportunity to usher in or introduce a new piece of technology that can help all of my friends and all of my colleagues yeah. who suffer through the same kinds of challenges, like who wouldn't want that opportunity, you know? So um, when I, the film I was um, wanting to use it on was uh, one of the Godzilla movies. Um, it's called King of Monsters. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, because it was brand new, it had not yet been tested. So I had to get it past both legendary and Warner Brothers, you know, content security. And that's a big, big deal because that's like a $200 million IP that's running across the platform. Um, and to my surprise uh, and delight, um, they gave me the green light to try to use it with a director. And by the time I started using it, um, I had like maybe two or three week, weeks of footage. So in what was meant to be a test, because the director was already in, uh, this was in Atlanta. 
um, I just said, hey, Michael, why don't we you know, get together on a Sunday? I'll, I'll run some footage for you and just tell me if you think this is something that we can use. And it just naturally evolved into this work session where you know, I was just running footage for me and instantly, instead of saying, yes, this platform is good or this platform is bad, he just focused intently on the material I was sending him, the, the, the cut. Mm -hmm. And so we just started working. And so three hours later, uh, he goes, by the way, don't even come out here. Uh, there's no, there's no point. Let's just continue using this. And my, that's when I knew it worked. Right. Yeah. And I had, who are my new, who are now my co-founders were waiting for me on the other end to, um, because no one had used this up to that point. Wow. And so, um, I invited them into the room afterwards and said, guys, this is a home run. Um, and then from that point, um, we knew we had something that was more than just an idea in our heads. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ended up using it on the entire film. I never had to go to Atlanta once. Wow. And the irony for me was, you know, I've been sent to location for 20 plus years. And it's rare that when I'm sent to location to work with a director, that I never get to work with a director because they are so thinly spread throughout the day. Every department, you know, needs their attention as 101 questions. So oh, yeah. by, the, by the time it comes to, hey, um, I'm your editor. Can I show you some footage? They're just like, post-production? Why do I need to focus on this? I've got a million and one things that I need to focus on to not only shoot, you know, today, but tomorrow, right? Um, and so I'm sort of at the bottom of that ladder. And it really results in not a lot of time and, and energy focused on editorial. So yeah. using Evercast, I found that um, there were all these moments throughout the day when Michael, who Michael Doherty, who directed that movie, would just open up his laptop either like on set, in between lighting setups, or in his trailer at lunch. All these like 15, 20 minute you know, moments, sometimes an hour. Um, would add up to a tremendous change in my workflow and how quickly I can evolve the cut um, so that when he returned to LA, all of these little moments um, gave him an opportunity, gave him really kind of a bite at the apple before he came back to editorial, came back to LA to start work with me. So all that tension that I'm used to having when a director comes back, like, what movie do I have? Does this guy know what he's doing? Are we on the same page? You know, there's all this anxiety, but using Evercast, I found like, you know, he had already made a pass with almost every scene in the movie with me by the time he got back. So we already knew roughly the movie that I had cut for him because I got all that feedback. Um, and so it, it just ended up being a, a great experience. And um, so great in fact that afterwards, um, I took nine months off. <laughs> well, that's convenient and nice that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Well, yeah. So, I mean, no one knew about this, right? And uh -huh. I wanted to spread the word. I, this, this was an opportunity for me, like I said, to really change a lot of lives. So um, I took nine months off and, um, and basically walked Evercast into all of the studios. I leveraged all the relationships that I had. And, you know, just basically like a, you know, salesman, I <laughs> just, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just sharing my experience yeah. having used it, you know, on Godzilla. And so slowly by slowly, you know, we got more and more clients. And, um, but like I said, it's really tough to change people's habits. Um, and trust is a big obstacle too, when you have, you know, um, like I said, really expensive intellectual property running across the platform. So oh yeah. Um, we got a couple big shows. Um, like for example, we got Chernobyl, where they basically, you know, made the entire show on the platform. Like same with uh, Top Gun 2. Um, you know, they basically very rarely got in the same room at the same time because hmm. they had a composer over here, the editor was over there, the director was over here. So they would all come into the Evercast room and just start working together literally as if you know you're they're behind you on the couch 
Hmm. And so a lot of people kind of like, you know, raise their eyebrows at that because, you know, the, you know what it's like. It's like this industry is all about, oh, so-and-so is using that. Hmm, maybe I should consider it. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's just maybe it's human nature. Maybe it's unique to Hollywood. I don't know. But it's, it's that's kind of how things run here. And so the more traction we got, the more, you know, curious people were about it. And then COVID hit. Mm. And so we were, you know, uniquely positioned uh, at that point, but we were only three people. Um, well, there was the three of us, because uh -huh. by then um, I had also invested like basically all my, you know, liquid cash into this as well, just to keep the company alive yeah. while it was struggling to try to get more traction, right? So um, I became a co-founder in the company. And, and so when COVID hit, there were basically the three of us and a handful of uh, you know, DevOps. And, um, and so we just got inundated with hundreds of you know, TV shows and features who all needed a solution immediately. And so we had to find a way to scale uh, quickly in terms of our staff, Oh yeah, um, and and thankfully, the um, the platform itself, um, which up to that point was never really tested at this level, with so many, you know, projects and thousands of users on the platform at once, um, it held up incredibly well, and um, and that you know, that that just started the snowball effect, and so over the course of last year, yeah, we grew like fourteen hundred percent. So it's been quite a ride. You know, we're going to take a step back here. For, let's, let's dumb it down for people like me. So for those <laughs> okay, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that don't know what Evercast is, what, what are the gist and kind of the basics of it? If you just hear about it, come across it, like what would yeah. you say um, it yeah. is and the function of it? Okay, so Evercast is the Zoom for creatives. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we, you know, that's what we consider it. Um, it allows you to come together into a room that looks very similar to what we're, we're looking at here. Uh, we can handle, you know, currently um, like between 40 and 50 people into a room at once. But the big difference is the, tr the creative toolkit that we have inside specifically for creative collaboration um, and the quality of the stream that um, you can send someone uh, you know, pretty much blows, you know, the competition away, uh, especially those that, um, you know, don't require expensive proprietary hardware on both ends, which we don't. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, the fact that we have almost zero latency uh, on the stream is critically important because, oh, yeah. you know, in the case of me and Michael on Godzilla, if I press play on my avid here, he cannot be re receiving that six seconds later. It just doesn't work. Um, because if I'm trying to cut with him, he's like, okay, stop there. No, stop there. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, and you're already uh, on the next thing. <laughs> it's it like, yeah. Work, you know, um, but it's not just the latency. It's also the quality of the stream because a trust me when I say a director does not want to look at their own footage if it's not pristine. If it's not, you know, uh, at least. What's the resolution maybe. that we're getting so, here? So currently, we we currently we're at 1080, 60 mm -hmm. frames a second. Okay. Uh, we're developing 2K and 4K uh, resolution as we speak. Because we live on Google Chrome, there's there's a there's a ceiling uh, that we can work with, right? Um, but what we're doing is uh, we're about to release our own native app, and then that ceiling is removed. So at that point, we can, you know, really bump up the resolution and um, expose a lot of, you know, a lot of new use cases um, to the platform, like color correction, um, you know, live screenings, um, you know, things like that, where, um, you know, currently uh, it, it is more than capable of cutting scenes and screening, you know, like um, we, on the film I just finished, which is Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt, mm -hmm. um, I, 
I didn't meet the director. Well, let's put it this way. I've been on the show now for a year. We were literally finishing up tomorrow. Um, I got to go at 8.30 tonight to watch the 5.1 uh, Print Master and then uh, the 7.1 tomorrow, and then I'm done. Wow. So for the last year during COVID, I've been working on this movie and I have been in the same room with uh, the director like only a handful of times um, because you know, this is just the way we work. We enter into this room and thankfully the quality is such that he can see what I'm doing and, um, and not freak out that the image quality, you know, sucks or it's, you know, um, it's lagging or it's stuttering or, you know, any, any number of other artifacts that some of our competitors, you know, often, you know, um, you know, experience. So, right. Um, and, and what's, what's great for our users is it doesn't require a lot of bandwidth to accomplish this. And don't ask me how, you know, my, my two co-founders did this with, with the development team. Um, but it really takes a surprisingly low amount of bandwidth in order to pull this off. That's so, huge. That's yeah. Huge. And it, it really is because it, it, it enables and be, that plus the fact that you don't need encoders and decoders on, on each end. Um, it, it means that um, an editor can reach out to a director across you know, uh, the Atlantic or in Asia spontaneously. And that's, that's key. Uh, the, spon the creative spontaneity that Evercast you know, uh, promotes um, really keeps my workflow like chugging along because pre-COVID, um, all the collaboration that was happening was all file-based, which means mm. I'd have to export out of my editing system um, a, a piece of you know video that I wanted someone to see and react to. So I'd export that, then I'd upload it to you know one of the platforms, and then that person would have to download it, then they'd watch it, then they'd email me notes. Kind of like a we transfer, right? I mean, in a sense. There's a few of them, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's incredibly cumbersome and yeah. it's not very collaborative. And it meant that I'm waiting for hours, days, and sometimes weeks before I get feedback, you know, on that cut. So, you know, imagine just removing all of that. And now I hit play on my Avid and I'm streaming to you exactly what I'm seeing here, you know, with 1080, 60 frames a second, you know, quality. And, and suddenly I don't have to wait for your feedback. I can see it live while we're talking. You can, you know, like many of the other platforms, you can draw on the screen. Uh, I can record the entire session. Mm -hmm. So let's say, let's say I've got 10 people in the room with me, right? That I'm all, yeah. that I'm streaming to. When I play back the recording, I can actually jump between all the participants to watch them watch my footage. Oh, that's good. Uh, there's a lot of nuance in there, believe me, you know, that I'm seeing in terms of people reacting to jokes or, you know, sometimes not in a good way, like I'll, I'll see someone grimace or, you know, I'm like, oh, that didn't work. That's all useful information, right? Yeah, no, no so, doubt about um, it. Yeah, and so we're, you know, we're also introducing a, a lot of really exciting features like the ability to provision other people to see um, those recordings. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that'll, be, that'll be really exciting. You know, like for example, I'll be able to send you a, a, or if you wanted your brother to see the session we just had to get their feedback, um, I could clip out a piece of that recording and send them a URL which would provision them only to see the section that we wanted them to see of that recording, mm -hmm. not just the whole thing, right? Yeah, you can. So um, there's a, you know, because of the explosion of growth we have, it's really enabled us to accelerate um, many of the features that are going to be coming out in the next few months. So we're super excited about it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's what cool. sort of editing. Uh, so it, you said you mentioned a toolkit. Does it you use your own editing software yes. uh, at home and then just stream it through? Uh, it right. doesn't have to have particular, does it have to have Avid or could you have different? I know it's there's agnostic. industry standards, but it's completely agnostic. That's a really mm -hmm. good question. It's it's agnostic to whatever you want to use. 
Oh, that's good. It's not, of, course, of course, it's not limited to editing applications at all. You could be, uh, I could be, you know, editing here on Avid or Premiere or Final Cut and be streaming to you the same piece of, you know, uh, content that's being output, right? Mm -hmm. I could also be a composer working on Pro Tools who wanted to send you, um, you know, what, what I'm, and that's done all the time. You know, um, our, our composer on Far War, Lauren Balf lives in London. And so we would, you know, join up, you know, uh, daily with him and we would share new cuts of scenes with him and he would share with us simultaneously because you can share, you know, in both directions. So he would share with us, you know, what he's doing with some of the suites or themes um, or emotional, you know, um, tone that um, we're trying to achieve in the in the score. Um, so it could it could easily be also be uh, a visual effects, you know, uh, platform that I am working on here. So, like for example, when I uh, worked on Six Underground with Michael Bay. He um, did all of his, what's called previs, which is um, uh, instead of, you probably are familiar with storyboards. Sure. Well, so uh, previs is really animated storyboards, right? But it, it really allows a filmmaker to wrap their heads around, um, especially action scenes and especially action scenes that involve animated characters. Because when the um, director shows up to a set, they want to be as efficient as they possibly can, which means they need to know every shot that they need to get. Of course, they may want to get coverage beyond that, but they know, okay, these 15 shots, I cannot leave here today without them because you've already pre what the scene will look like. Of course, they're all animated characters because they only live in the computer, right? Mm -hmm. But Michael would get on Evercast with all of his animators and just go down the line. There'd be like eight of them. Uh, and he's okay, show me what you got. And then the person would show, uh, I think they were using Maya um, and Michael would say, okay, ch let's change the focal length on that. Let's, you know, change the size of the frame. Let's zoom in. Let's, you know, whatever, he, whatever direction he wanted to give, they could do it live. And then he just moved down, you know, the line literally as if, you know, almost like a visual effects sweatshop. He was just like going between all of the different animators. And so, think of the efficiency that that creates, right? Oh yeah. Um, especially when everybody are all in different places. So um, it could also be um, a game developer um, developing, you know, either their, you know, any aspect of their game development. We have a lot of um, game gaming platforms using Evercast just for that, just for that reason because many of the uh, benefits to the film community also um, you know, benefit them in terms of, like I said, we're the, the, the Zoom for creatives, right? So um, even though it, it's a different craft, it's still, a, it's still a creative craft. They need to collaborate, they need to share content, they need to keep that content safe. Um, and so Evercast enables them to do that. So it's, yeah, it's, we're, we're certainly not just an editorial collaboration platform. Um, we, are, we are really um, a creative collaboration platform. And, and that would extend even into you know, architecture um, and CAD uses as well, so. Yeah, I was gonna kind of ask on that uh, in, in that kind of frame, does this, obviously this is used for high end stuff like movies and, and high end productions, but do you foresee this uh, in a sense, a version of it or, or is, it transcends uh, yeah. or, or kind of translates to like students using it between projects yeah. and college? Like I'm is so, this I'm for so high end stuff or could it also be used for lower end for like everyday kind of users of editing or whatnot? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, the answer is yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, because we are such a young company and have experienced, you know, such incredible growth in a short amount of time, um, we, um, you know, have, we, we definitely have ambitions to reach into the prosumer world, the, all of the YouTubers, all of the student mm -hmm. filmmakers out there. And so really what that comes down to is accessibility, scaling and pricing. Right. Um, and so we have a plan, which we're going to be unleashing here in the next two to three months, 
which will enable all of those groups access to the platform. Of course, just like any traditional like SaaS company, um, which is um, um, software as a service, right? Mm -hmm. In any of the, you know, whether you use Adobe or um, any other application, they have different tiers. Right. So you basically, you know, say, okay, well, this is what I need. I don't want to pay for anything more. When we first started out, because, you know, I'm the one who kind of ushered this into the film world, I happened to work on you know, feature films, many of which are, you know, big blockbuster scale movies. And so that's just naturally where Evercast, you know, that, that was our entry point mm -hmm. into the filmmaking community. Um, but, you know, if you consider, you know, Hollywood and sort of blockbuster movies, you know, kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of, you know, what trends people begin to follow. I think we're in a really unique position to have all these incredible, you know, filmmakers um, like Paul Greengrass, like Michael Mann, um, you know, many more who, you know, I, I'm probably not at liberty to discuss, but, you know, all these people who, some of which are on our website, mm -hmm. um, you know, advocating for the platform, um, when they use it, if you're a young filmmaker, I mean, that's pretty inspiring. It's like, no oh my God, if that technology is available to me, um, yeah, I want to use it. And so if you're a young filmmaker, imagine, um, you know, having your, your classmates or your friends or your family, imagine showing them and working with your cut, with your peer group to get their feedback much earlier in the process, right? Mm -hmm. And then it becomes sort of a, a interesting social experiment too, because you know, you're like, hey guys, you know, jump into my room. I just want to show you something. You can screen your whole movie and then get instant feedback, so that so that before you're done, um, you know, you get that feedback. And for a lot of independent filmmakers, that's just not possible right now. That's huge. That. That'd be a game. Yeah, I mean, we we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to you know, um, to dress, you know, the movies that I work, to dress them up, mm -hmm. to, to prep them, to take out to a preview screening uh, for hundreds of people at a time. Then there's a focus group that's followed. And all of that data that we receive definitely affects the outcome of the changes, you know, that occur afterwards. So, if you're a, if you are a YouTuber or if you are an independent filmmaker, and now you have the same ability to, to invite people into your room, show your movie, get their feedback, make the changes and improve your storytelling. I mean, it's a, it's a win for everybody. So we're definitely working on all of that right now. And um, I think over the spring, um, you know, we, we've got some big name YouTubers um, very influential people who uh, will be um, creating videos and advocating for us. So we're super excited about how we're positioning ourselves to enter into that market. Um, but it's going to take us just a couple more months to get there. Oh, that's great. That's great that you guys already foreshadowed that it's before exciting. and they're yeah. working on it. You know, that's yeah. huge. I think once it gets to a tier where it's uh, available for for an everyday kind of person that's not in the you know the top yeah. of the industry i think that's when really things are going to start really exploding everywhere you know well and, and that and for us what we need to make sure more than anything is that as you know because in the in the filmmaking community yes we have thousands of users and hundreds mm -hmm. of projects but if you consider the worldwide you know youtube community or the independent filmmakers or the students that are out there now you're talking a whole different level of, right. of scaling. And so what's most important is that our platform deliver, um, you know, when we make that jump. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't do so and then have the platform stall or, you know, have any kind of hiccup. So technically, um, we, you know, that's, that's also in the works to make sure that when we do make that move, um, we do so successfully. 
Yeah, it's ready to go. No, I think that's fantastic. You know, I was right away curious, like, oh, is this going to be available to someone like me, you know, potentially, yeah. but but hearing that, I think that could be a game changer for everyone, uh, you know, outside of the Hollywood bubble in a sense, you know, who yeah. also is part of this industry uh, in a smaller context in, in that way too. That That's phenomenal. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm curious, what, what kind of team do you require? I mean, to, to run this, I mean, you start off kind of as patient zero, you know, on this, yeah. but uh, at this point with the expansions and, and the work you guys constantly keep on redoing, now we're entering a new phase of like more things opening up, you know, and, and kind of like yeah, yeah. high, almost a hybrid version of, of things that might be coming. What sort of team do you require to have uh, to kind of be, keep it up and keep on building? Well, so the, um, the the process of sharing my screen with a director mm -hmm. is really as easily as opening. We have this application called EBS, um, where uh, it basically will take whatever content you want. It could be a part of your screen. It could ingest an external video source, or it could take a you know for for me uh, in terms of my Avid. It literally takes the uh, video and audio right out of the uh, cards internally of the computer and streams that as well. So there's a lot of different ways we can share content, but once you set all that up, you don't need a team. There is no team. You basically, um, you know, uh, like for what I would do is I would, you know, text my director if I if I wanted to share something with him, he would text me, hey, let's jump in the room for 15 minutes or, hey, let's run the movie um, you know, in a half hour. So I would prepare the movie. Um, we would jump in the room just like, it's very similar to this, right? Except mm -hmm. for unlike Zoom, um, once you create an Evercast room, that's your room. I so see. you don't need to invite people. You don't need to send out invites every time you want to jump in a room. Mm -hmm. So once we say, okay, here's your room, um, we... Uh, we provision you with a URL and then who you share that with is completely up to you, but you can, you can give it to, you know, a hundred of your closest friends, 40 can jump in the room at once. And for those people who may not have liked what you had to show them, you can disinvite them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. So, Good capability uh, too. Very important. Yes. Um, so you manage your own invites, but once, um, once you have those invites out, they, everyone just goes to the same URL. So what I would do is bookmark, you know, the, your room and everyone else that you collaborate with, they do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So um, often like the director I just finished working with, Chris McKay, um, we, we just had a bookmark that said, you know, Roger's room. We each had our own room. So Roger's room, Chris's room. Um, and then we would make a decision. Let's jump in this room or that room. We'd hit the mm -hmm. URL we'd see each other just like this. And all he would have to do to start sharing content is hit start streaming. Um, and that's it. The stream would just simply pop up here um, and I could hit, you know, I control the stream through my editing system. Uh, just like if it was visual effects, I would do the same thing or, or music, the same thing here. So Evercast does not control the content currently, um, but, uh, you know, we were talking about some of the creative tools that we are in the process of building out. And one of those um, would allow you, if you wanted to, to, um, you know, upload material uh, up to the server. Mm -hmm. And then once that material lives up there, anybody can control it who's in the room. Uh -huh. I was wondering that. I was, I was going to ask you that yeah. if there's like a users can actually, you know, whoever's in the room can do. Okay. So that's another yeah. Ask yeah, and so them. right now I'm controlling yeah. the stream because mm -hmm. I'm 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 you know I have access to it here. But once sure. you detach from this, you get a file up, and then Avid or, or Evercast will be able to play, fast forward, rewind, uh, and then you know. So imagine a director is in a different time zone than you, and you upload something to them. They could literally watch it on their own, hit play, hit record at the same time watch the content and content on it or comment on it as they're watching it. And then you get that recording the next day and you have, you know, all of their comments about what you posted the previous night. 
um, with drawings or, you know, they can pause, talk about something, they can draw on the, the screen, uh, hit play again, and just go through the entire movie that way and just give you notes. So a lot of different applications uh, for that use case. And as far as recording, um, is yeah. it individual files for individual speakers or is it like, you're, let's say we're in a group of 10, right? Uh, yeah. Is there a group chat recording where you can get all 10 on the same recording or is it individual files of individual speakers? How is that? We, we actually record every stream individually. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we do that is when you play back a recording on Evercast, um, you can switch between it basically looks like a regular session when you're watching a recording. Mm -hmm. um, it, and so you can click between the content that was being streamed or you can click between the participants who were watching to go full screen. And, and given that we record every stream individually, that, that's what allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Any ideas of doing just like a, adding a one form kind of uh... Uh, for everyone, a thing too. Additionally, a recording that just uh, captures everyone on, uh, on one the same page. Yeah, yeah. That that's really actually really interesting. Um, it's actually a really good idea um, because what it, in in some ways what for it would replay be, purposes too. You know, like a well, general yeah. overview in a sense. Yeah. You know, if you don't it's, want to well, exactly, especially yeah. especially if you have like a comedy, right? Um, mm -hmm. you know, you can have a tile of all these different faces. Yeah, a gallery, we've all, right. We've all seen gallery view on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So as you're streaming, um, yeah, you could you could really dial into the reactions. Did that joke work? Did that jump, you know, did that joke not work? Or in the or in the, or if it's a you know, imagine a horror movie and you gotta nail those jump scares, right? Yep. That's and what I was so thinking. It, if people are watching this and just like no reaction, you, that means you got to go back and rework some of that. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be an option you're thinking of uh, including. I think that would be pretty interesting. Cool. I, I do too. I do too. We have not, I'll be honest, Jim, we haven't, uh, you know, talked about that, but um, that's something worth uh, considering. That'd be cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We need a little suggestion, like a digital suggestion box. <laughs> I'm uh, here for it. You know, if you need any <laughs> any ideas, maybe they might be bad ones, but <laughs> you never know. Sometimes well, that can... one happened to be pretty good. So <laughs> there you um, go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that one up up the chain and see how far I can get with it. Well, there you go. I think that'd be we'll call cool. It, we'll call it the gym feature. <laughs> Whoa, uh, one point one percent of a, of a idea or something. <laughs> I'll I'll be happy if someone even like thought about it for a second. <laughs> so, this is cool. I, I'm I'm excited to to see more of this, uh, Roger. I think you you're on to you've been onto something great here, and and with how it's expanded over the past year. I mean, the growth you mentioned is incredible. I think this is a new new wave, a, a new a new software platform basically in our marketplace now that, that you're introducing. I think it's fantastic. And Thank you I was so excited much. to you talk know, to I, you about it. I'm super excited about introducing this to, you know, everyone who has maybe heard about it, but hasn't experienced it firsthand or who has looked at our pricing and said, oh, okay, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. uh, very soon it will be. And um, I, I think, like you said, that's when this gets blown up to a whole nother level. No question. Yeah, you know, it, it's like I always had a good spot for editors because I always would cover the uh, Eddie Awards, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the oh, okay, Eddie yeah. Yeah. So I always found the editors to be I'm like, you guys are literally like the people that might not know you guys are the, the creators of the movie because you can cut something and you can cut it the way that a movie is shown completely different. So you guys at the end are the ones that are cutting the cake in a sense, you know, oh, so everyone yeah, gets it, a slice. It is uh, for people who, you know, of course, we don't get a lot of attention. No, it, for me personally, for me personally, and a lot of people I know who work as editors, that's fine. We're not in it for that. <laughs> I know. Um, but I'd like to think of us as the secret sauce um, because it, 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 in my opinion, it is the most creative role in filmmaking. Um, and to have the ability to make all these nuanced small changes that make a big overall you know, impact, not only on performance, but maybe how that performance impacts the storytelling. Um, it's just, 
it's super fun. And when you add to it, you know, CG characters and, and these big visual effects movies like, you know, World War Z, all those oh, yeah. digital zombies, that was just so incredibly fun to cut. Awesome. Well, I want to follow up with you, you know, cool. as soon Absolutely. and uh, I want to, if, if there's a, like a sample of the, the software, I want to test it out and see, you can use me as a guinea pig before, you know, you put anything out consider, there. Consider it done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I um, will love it. I work with a lot of editing. You know, I, I do it on a smaller scale with Final okay. Cut and, and Adobe yeah. Premiere and all that way, or Rush, you know, depends on little quick edits and stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's an interesting world of editing when it comes to video. And I think yeah, like yeah. you mentioned, YouTubers, a lot of us, use it you know these days it's it's, it's it hasn't become a, a you know for filmmakers only it's it's become a, a way of basically of, of being a a content creator you need to edit and, and you need to know how to do it so i think that's relevant to a lot of people outside of the, the you know filmmaking world i do too absolutely and um you know it just the more you share with other people the more you learn mm -hmm. um i mean I was not a traditional film school person. I didn't go to NYU or USC. Um, you know, I learned, um, you know, kind of the hard way um, just by starting out as a PA and, and climbing all the rungs of the ladder. And luckily for me in my career, um, you know, I met people who mentored me along the way. And for me, that was my film school. Um, and, you know, I, I did start down that path, but when I was going down those parallel paths of going to film school, having you know um, a foot in the door of an editorial room, that I would go to my class and I'd say, "Wait a minute, that's not that's not how they do it." Mm -hmm. um, and so I found that at least in some of the classes I was taking, they seemed to be behind the curve a little bit. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that's not the case in, in most instances, but it did have an impact on me. And I felt like I felt at home when I was inside the cutting room. I felt like these are my people um, in a way, because like I said, very few editors I know are looking for any kind of attention. Not at um, all. <laughs> they're tough to interview too. We, you we know, spend, they're just, we, they don't want to praise themselves or we anything. spend a lot of time by ourselves in dark rooms, <laughs> yes. right? You really have to like yourself if you're going to be an editor, right? Totally. Um, so, um, yeah, I just felt at home and, and like I said, was um, very lucky to meet um, some highly influential, highly experienced editors who, you know, basically taught me everything they knew. And, uh, and so I try to do the same thing uh, as, as now, you know, I, I, you know, bring new people into the cutting room and, and just try to share as much as I can with them um, and just, you know, pay, paying it forward. No question. That's what it's yeah. about. You know, when you do a lot of that you it, it's it's a you know, it's kind of a snowball effect in a lot of ways. You know, yeah. you you had that experience. Now you're giving it to someone. That's how this industry and this profession is going to keep on going. Nice. And you have great creators because of doing that. You know, yeah. if, if you harness your own knowledge, it doesn't serve the community at the end, you know, to that 100%. degree. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. fantastic uh roger i'm excited we finally got to catch up yeah, let's and, let's do a part two at some yes. point when when we have that version in the next uh, month or two. Oh uh, my god for sure let's let's do this again i i would love to so uh okay. hey it's more stuff's coming now it's really gonna start getting uh, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> rolling in that way. talk to you soon roger okay, thanks thank again you, for Jim. your time really appreciate the time you got it all right bye